Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel all about electronics. So in this question, we have been given this 4-bit ripple carry adder and it is designed using the full adders. So here, we have been also given the design of the each full adder. Moreover, we have been also given the propagation delay of the each logic gate in the given design. So here, initially all the bits of this ripple carry adder is reset to 0 and at time t is equal to 0. The specific inputs are applied to this 4 bit adder. So, here we have been asked to find the time at which the output of this ripple carry adder will become stable. So, for the ripple carry adder, we know that all the input bits to the all full adder are applied simultaneously. But the output carry of the one adder is given as an input to the next adder. So, if all the carries are 0, then each full adder stays can generate the valid sum and the carry output instantaneously. But if the previous stage generates the carry, then that particular stage has to wait for that carry from the previous adder. For example, if this full adder 0 generates the carry, then this FA1 needs to wait for that carry from the FA0. For example, if this C1 is available after 50 nanosecond, then this FA1 has to wait until 50 nanosecond. And after that time only, it can generate the valid sum and the carry output. So let's say, if it generates the valid sum output after x nanosecond, then this S1 will be available after 50 nanosecond plus x seconds. And let's say, once this C1 is available, then this FA1 takes the y nanosecond to generate the C2. So in that case, this C2 will be available after 50 nanosecond plus y nanoseconds. But if this C1 is 0, then this FA1 can generate this S1 and C2 in X and Y nanoseconds respectively. So in the worst case, if this carry is propagating from the first stage to the last stage, then the valid sum and the carry output will be available after that propagation delay. So that is the worst case scenario, where the carry is propagating from the first stage to the last stage. But in between, if the intermediate stage does not generate the carry, then the final stable output can be available even before the worst case delay. So the given example is the one such case. So in this example, initially, all the bits to the full bit adder are reset to zero. So initially, all these input bits are zero. That means initially, all the sum and the carry outputs are zero. And at time t is equal to zero, the new inputs are applied to this four bit adder. So now let us see at what time we will get the stable output of this 4-bit adder. So when these inputs are applied at that time, all the input carries to the each full adder is equal to 0. So here, this one input is 0, 1, 1, 0, while the second input is 1, 0, 1, 1. So first of all, let us find the valid sum output. So this 0 plus 1 should be equal to 1. Then this 1 plus 1 is equal to 0, and the output carry is equal to 1. Then in the third column, this 1 plus 1 is 0 and the carry is equal to 1. And then in the last column, this 1 plus 1 is equal to 0 and the carry is equal to 1. So the summation of these two numbers should be equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. That is the valid output. So here, to calculate the time, first of all, let us start with the FA0. And here, we have been also given the internal circuit of this each full adder. So let's say this circuit is the circuit of the FA0. So at time t is equal to 0, this A0 is equal to 0, while this B0 is equal to 1. And here, we have been also given the propagation delay of the each logic gate. So the propagation delay of this XOR gates is equal to 20 nanosecond, while the propagation delay of this AND and the OR gate are 15 nanosecond and the 10 nanosecond respectively. So as soon as we apply this input, then the output of this first XOR gate is available after 20 nanosecond. And here, this C0 is initially set to 0. That means this sum output will be available after 40 nanosecond, and that is equal to 1. So this 1 will be available after 40 nanosecond. And likewise, this valid carry output will be available after this 20 plus 15 plus 10 nanosecond that is equal to 45 nanosecond and in this case that is equal to 0. So here since there is no change in this carry output, 
so this fa1 can generate its valid output instantaneously that means the output of this first header is equal to 1 and the carry is equal to 0 so this sum output is available after 40 nanosecond while the carry is already 0 and since there is a no change in the carry bit so this fa1 can generate its valid sum and the carry output instantaneously but of course it will take its own propagation delay so as soon as we apply this input bits to this first full adder then it will start generating the valid sum and the carry output so once we apply this 1 1 input then after 20 nanosecond the output of this first xor gate will become 0 and here this c1 is already equal to 0 that means it will generate its valid output after 40 nanosecond and that is equal to 0 but as you can see initially this s1 was already 0 that means there will not be any change in this s1 similarly now let us see when the carry output will change so initially these c1 and c2 both were 0 so once we apply this input 1 and 1 then the output of this lower end gate will become 1 and it will become 1 after 15 nanosecond and it is available to the OR gate after 15 nanosecond. Now at that time the output of this first AND gate is already equal to 0 because initially all the adders were reset to 0. So at 15 nanosecond the inputs to the OR gate are 0 and 1 and after its own propagation delay the carry output will become 1. That means at 25 nanosecond if you see then the carry output is already equal to 1. That means this one is available at 25 nanosecond. So actually this second valid input is available only after 35 nanosecond. That is the delay of this XOR gate and the AND gate. And after this time only this OR gate can generate its valid output. But even before this 35 nanosecond also this second input was already equal to 0. That means even after the valid inputs also the output of this OR gate will not change. That means it will become 1 only at the 25 nanosecond and then after even at the 45 nanosecond also it will remain same. So we can say that for this first full adder this carry output will become 1 at the 25 nanosecond. So now after 25 nanosecond this valid carry input is available to this FA2. So as soon as this valid carry input is available then this FA2 can generate its sum and the carry output. So here this A2 is equal to 1 while the B2 is equal to 0 and this C2 will become 1 only after 25 nanosecond. So here the output of this first XOR gate will become 1 at the 20 nanosecond while this input will become 0 at 15 nanosecond. So here one of the input to this OR gate is already equal to 0 at the 15 nanosecond but here it has to wait for the second input so here the output of this AND gate will become 1 after this 25 plus 15 nanosecond that is equal to 40 nanosecond and once this valid input is available then it will generate the valid carry output after the delay of this OR gate that is equal to 10 nanosecond that means this valid carry C3 output is available at 40 plus 10 nanosecond that is equal to 50 nanosecond and this sum output will become 0 at 20 plus 20 nanosecond while this carry output will become 1 after 50 nanosecond that means this C3 will become 1 at 50 nanosecond and as soon as this valid C3 input is available this FA3 can generate its valid sum and the carry output so here for the FA3 this a3 is equal to 0 while this b3 is equal to 1 and this valid c3 input is available after 15 nanosecond. So before the arrival of this c3 the output of this first XOR and the AND gate is already available to the circuit. So here the output of the first XOR gate is equal to 1 and it is available to the circuit at 20 nanosecond. Similarly the output of this lower AND gate is equal to 0 and it is available at the 15 nanosecond. But this upper AND gate has to wait for this C1 for the 15 nanosecond and as soon as it is available then the output of this upper AND gate will become 1. So it will become 1 after this 15 plus 15 nanosecond that is equal to 65 nanosecond while the other input is already 0 at the 15 nanosecond. 
so as soon as this second input is available this or gate will generate its output after 10 nanosecond that means this c4 will be available after 75 nanosecond on the other end if you see this sum output then one of the input to this last xor gate is available at the 20 nanosecond while the other input is available after 50 nanosecond so it has to wait till the 50 nanosecond and once this c3 is available then it will generate its varied sum output after 20 more nanosecond that means this s3 is available at the 70 nanosecond that means for the given 4 bit ripple carry header the final stable output is available only after 75 nanosecond and hence we can say that the stable output for the given header is available at the 75 nanosecond